It's in the way we work and the way we compete. It's in the way we reach out and why we dream. Titan Pride is at the heart of who we are. Whether it's on the field or on stage, in the classroom or in the boardroom, Titans reach higher. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Cal State Fullerton's 2017 Convocation. I'm Anil Puri, and it's my pleasure to be here once again at my favorite event of the year. I've been here at Cal State Fullerton, had the honor of serving for over 30 years as professor of economics, dean of Mahalo College of Business and Economics, and now as interim provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. You know, at each convocation, there's a distinct buzz in the air as we greet old friends and look forward to new adventures and great discoveries in the coming year. This year is no different. At this moment in Cal State Fullerton's history, nearly 60 years after our first freshman class took their seats, we are now ranked by US News and World Report as a first tier university. We are number one in California and second in the nation in awarding bachelor's degrees to Hispanic students. And, <laughs> and sixth in the nation for graduating students of color. We are well on our, on our way to becoming the model comprehensive university for the nation, thanks to the continued commitment of everyone in this room. And we have been led here by the extraordinary vision of our president, Dr. Mildred Garcia. Allow me to tell you a little bit about her. President Garcia once lived in the projects in the Bronx. As the first person in her family, to attend college, she took the initiative to earn her associate degree in legal secretarial sciences from New York City Community College. With courage, intelligence, and persistence, she went on, on to earn a bachelor's and a master's degree in business education and a master's degree in higher education, along with a doctor of education degree from Columbia University. She became an esteemed professor and researcher before stepping up to serve as the first Latina president in the CSU system. Among her countless accomplishments and achievements, in 2012, President Garcia spurred us at Cal State Fullerton to create a far-reaching strategic plan that has transformed our campus. This vital document set in writing our long-standing commitment to student success and timely graduation top quality academic and co-curricular programs, recruiting and retaining stellar faculty and staff, and diversifying our revenue streams for strong financial footing. While she worked, President Garcia has earned national regard both for the university and for her unparalleled leadership. She has served on numerous national boards and task forces, including President Obama's Commission on Educational Excellence for Hispanics, former U.S. Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan's U.S. Committee on Measures of Student Success, and the Association of American Colleges and Universities, for which she has served as chair of the board. But no matter how lofty her accomplishments, who she is and how she leads and what she believes all came from that small apartment in the Bronx. And it is that solid foundation that has lifted our students and our university to new heights. President Garcia knows about the aunts and uncles, cousins and grandparents back at home who are cheering for our first generation students as they extend their ancestral line to new expanses of prosperity and achievement. She knows about the hardworking communities 
that are looking to our students to return with the skills, wisdom, and motivation to address long-standing challenges and improve quality of life for all of us. She knows about the long work days, family concerns, financial obstacles, transportation challenges, and that stubborn self-doubt that many of our students must overcome every day. She knows the significant hurdles our students face just to make it to our campus and to take their seats and hear what we have to say. But most important, President Garcia knows what we must say, and that is, you belong here. As we look forward to our next 60 years, we must all hold firm to President Garcia's unwavering lifelong belief in the promise and potential of every human being. In our influential role as a model university, we must convey to every one of our students that they are essential to our campus and their future knows no bounds. And while they may, may face many hurdles at home, we must make sure that our students don't face any of those here. As a campus, we are diligently working together to eliminate the academic, administrative, financial, and social barriers that have blocked our students' success. And as a campus, we are focused intently on giving every student a world-class educational experience and the skills they need to succeed in life, work, and citizenship. Education transforms lives. It transforms families, communities, and it can transform our country. Just ask President Garcia, and I'm so immensely proud to hold, uphold her vision. Now, as our tradition has been, our President's Convocation Address will review the year that was and frame the year that will be. So please join me in giving a big Titan welcome to Cal State Fullerton's President, Dr. Mildred Garcia. Buenos dias. Happy new academic year. I'd like to begin by welcoming some of our special guests. Dr. Steve Stambaugh, chair of the Academic Senate and his fellow senators. Professor Dave Mickey, chair of the Planning, Resource, and Budget Committee. Vanessa Acuna, president of the Alumni Association. Esteemed members of our philanthropic board, ASI president, Leila Databoy and our bold scholars. Please join me in welcoming all these special guests. Now we have a treat. Now I'd also like to ask our founding Titans, alumni, faculty, and staff, who joined the Titan family between 1957 and 1969, to please stand. When we say once a titan, always a titan, you are the gold standard, and we are proud to officially begin our year-long diamond anniversary celebration by welcoming you on campus. Did you see the toughie with all the diamonds? It's right here. As, as everyone here knows, in addition to once a titan, always a titan, another university-wide theme has emerged one that encapsulates the tenacity of our diverse students, faculty, and staff. Titans reach higher. And as our founding Titans can attest, that spirit has been our driving force from day one. If you doubt that assertion, I encourage you to read the work of founding faculty member and professor emeritus of history, Lawrence B. DeGraff who's here with us this morning. Thank you for joining us. You'll learn that in 1959, just two years after the California legislature approved the founding of what was then Orange County State College, Governor Pat Brown left a dismal, 
$139,000 in the budget for the college's planning, hiring, and equipment acquisitions. That's right. Our university's first president, William Langsdorf, began his tenure dealing with a paltry budget from a governor named Brown. Now, why does that sound so familiar? <laughs> anyway, despite the adversity, Titans did what they've always done. They reached higher, even when it meant disregarding their own safety, literally. With zero buildings on campus to work in, the only option was a rundown building at Fulton, Fullerton High School that was condemned by fire inspectors. And while students were banned from entering the building, the state happily granted faculty and staff permission to march right in, <laughs> essentially telling them, if you're crazy enough to risk your life to start this little college, knock yourselves out. <laughs> Even when faculty and staff were upgraded to another Fullerton School District site, President Langsdorf's office was the only one with a fire escape. And I use the term fire escape loosely. It was a rope coiled under his desk so he could rappel out the window in an emergency. <laughs> now, I know we're doing a lot of things to commemorate our diving anniversary, but if anyone asks me to rappel down College Park, it'll be their last request as a Titan. <laughs> the point is, despite all these obstacles, according to Dr. DeGraff's historical history, Titans exhibited, and I quote, a spirit of confidence. Titans, like faculty member Jim Young, who was recruited in 1960 to create the Department of Theater with no budget and ended up staging the university's first productions in parking lots where props he pilfered from front yards on a trash day. Over the next 40 years, he and his beloved wife, Dottie, along with many other dedicated titans, transformed the fledging program into what is now an internationally acclaimed department of theater and dance. <laughs> titans like Betsy Gibbs, who arrived in 1974 as a director of the Children's Center with, quote, about five boxes of supplies and 45 parents on a waiting list. Betsy stayed another 37 years empowering student parents to reach their dreams of a college degree while inspiring their children to follow in their footsteps. Titans like Dr. Helen Morton, the university's first full-time director of the Health Center who was hired in 1963 to run a center that was nearly impossible to get to because of faulty elevators, prompting a long-standing joke that went something like this. If you're well enough to get to the health center, you probably aren't sick enough to be there. <laughs> As these and many other founding titans retired, the tradition of reaching higher in the face of adversity spread to new generations of titans, and this past year, we lost two of them. Dr. Jewel Plummer Cobb, president and professor of biological science emerita, and Dr. Milton Gordon, president and professor of mathematics emeritus. While some of you had the honor of working with these two leaders, all of us have been and forever will be impacted by their tremendous legacy. The granddaughter of a freed slave and the first African-American woman to lead a major university on the West Coast, Cobb personified what it means to reach higher, not just as a titan. This is a woman who is an academic, an academic administrator, faculty member in cancer researcher, researcher. This is a woman whose journey in higher education began with her being banned from living in college dorms due to the color of her skin and ended up with the residence halls at Cal State Fullerton being named in her honor. <laughs> Mr. 
Milton Gorton, who succeeded Cobb, shared her commitment to equitable access to higher education, a passion that was sparked when he moved to Louisiana from college and found himself forced to sit in segregated areas. Gorton went on to become only the fourth African-American president in the CSU, and in his 22-year tenure as president, he propelled this university into a national spotlight for providing equitable pathways to a superb higher education for all students. Indeed, President Cobb and Gorton not only understood the transformative power of higher education, they wielded it in ways that cleared a path for those who aspired to follow in their footsteps. I am one of those people, and I am so proud that today we see their spirit, along with the legacies of the tens of thousands of Titans who served here over the last 60 years in our classrooms, around our communities, and in every degree we confer. It is that spirit that began some 60 years ago when President Langsdorf took Miles McCarthy atop a nearby hill in a last-ditch effort to recruit him as a founding faculty member. The president proudly pointed in the direction of the campus and exclaimed, there it is. Of course, he was pointing out what McCarthy later called, and I quote, nothing but orange groves in every direction. But given what I know now about the Titan spirit, I don't believe that's what these two founding Titans truly saw that day. They may have been looking at this, but what they envisioned was this. Just like when Jim Young produced his first plays in parking lots, he knew this day was coming. And when Betsy Gibbs and her staff endure, endured their humble beginnings, they knew their work would lead to a brighter future. Or when a young biologist named Jewel Plummer Cobb was banned from on-campus dorms, she envisioned this day when a university named its residence halls in her honor or when Milton Gorton read that just 2.5% of foster youth graduate from college, he dreamed of this. A program for foster youth that in 2017 had rates of retention, persistence, and graduation of over 97%. This spirit of confidence and the ability to not only envision success in the face of adversity, but also reach higher to achieve it, has always been the way Titans teach, conduct research, collaborate, and perhaps more importantly, evolve. Over the past 60 years, California has gone from being more than 90% Caucasian to becoming the first majority minority state in the continental United States. And our success in adapting to this change makes us both a national model for equity and inclusion, and in some ways, a target for those who've recently been emboldened to lash out against it in ways we haven't seen since the civil rights movement. The reality of this new climate, which tragically yes, tragically played out in Charlottesville over the weekend, first hit me a few years ago. My heart already heavy from a shooting in a Charleston church that left nine African Americans dead sank to the depths of my soul when I saw a Confederate flag, the very symbol the shooter proudly displayed on social media, flying high in my neighbor's front yard. The dark shadow of the enormous flag literally and metaphorically stretched out to the property where I live, which as many of you know, is a university house and the site of many, many university events. Now let me be clear. 
I believe in the man's right to fly that flag on his personal property. But just as I believe, Cal State Fullerton must allow controversial voices from all sides of every argument to speak on our campus. As educators and Americans, we must walk that fine line between First Amendment rights and hate speech, upholding the Constitution while protecting those hurt by these words and actions. In the case of the flag looming over my home, I had my work cut out for me. Hundreds of diverse new Titans would soon be visiting the house for their first Titan welcome party, and they'd be driving past a Confederate flag to get there. As I pondered how to handle this situation, I recall the words of Martin Luther King, who said, quote, there comes a time when silence is betrayal. With this in mind, I began every event at the house with a welcome speech, announcing that Cal State Fullerton is the antithesis of everything that flag stands for. I spoke fall in love with Fullerton, a program that ensures prospective African-American students understand that Cal State Fullerton is a welcoming environment committed to their success. I talked about Celebración Familial, a program that welcomes new students and their families to a pre-orientation at which subjects like financial aid are covered in Spanish. I shared that we are number one in the U.S. for graduating women, and I explained that all Titans, including, including Caucasian men, are embedded in our definition of diversity, and that everyone deserves a voice in the civil discourse that is critical to the transformative experience of higher education. And that is, regardless of where they're from, how they got here, who they love, what gender they identify with, how much money they have in the bank, or what God they pray to. We all, all have that voice. And I believe now more than ever, it is a betrayal to silence it, particularly for those who may be frightened and scared in this political climate. Perhaps that is why I'm so frustrated when I travel the country and see marginalized students suffering, suffering from vitriol surrounding new political policies while the leaders of some of these universities remain silent. When I ask these leaders why they don't speak up, I hear the same reasoning. I disagree with what's happening. They say, I'm afraid of upsetting our donors and constituents. Author Bell Hooks addresses this fear, saying, quote, Dominate a culture has tried to keep us all afraid, to make us choose safety instead of risk, sameness instead of diversity. Moving through that fear, finding out what connects us, reveling in our differences, this is the process that brings us closer, that gives us a world of shared values, a world of meaningful community." Unquote. Our mission statement, the mission statement of other institutions across the country, speaks to this truth with language that publicly affirms a welcoming, inclusive, and safe environment for all students. So when our DACA students are threatened with deportation, or the Muslim members of our campus community are subjected to travel bans, or the legitimacy of Black Lives Matter is called into question, or our LGBTQ students fear losing their well-earned rights, we are obligated to speak out, not just on moral grounds, but also by the very tenets we agree to uphold by accepting a role of this institution with our mission statement. As we move forward in this new academic year, our fellow Titans will continue to grapple with complex emotional and political issues, providing us with an opportunity to support them in not only finding their own voice, but also respectfully listening to the voices of those with whom they disagree we will be challenged. This coming year, controversial figures will visit our campus. 
and we will work to ensure such visit, visits remain peaceful by role modeling positive behavior and supporting titans who may have opposing views. And while I will point to many ways the success of the past year underscores our commitment to diverse perspectives, I'd like to begin by doing so through the lens of a commitment I made four years ago to increase the number of high quality and diverse tenured track and tenured faculty. Since that time, we've hired 270 new tenure or tenure fa track faculty members, meaning that nearly one out of every three tenure or tenure fa track faculty members was hired in the last four years. I'd like to ask the newest members of that group, our 42 tenure and tenure track faculty members who are starting this fall to please stand and the lecturers also that are fought to all. Thank you and welcome. Your arrival puts an exclamation point on one of the best years in what is now our 60 year history. And if we measure success by the number of degrees conferred, it was our greatest year. To put this year's commencement success in perspective, through the context of the university's 60th birthday, consider this. At our very first commencement, a grand total of five graduates earned their degrees. <laughs> Notice how even back then we were trailblazers and that more than half of our first graduating class were women. <laughs> All three of them. This past May, our graduating class was again more than half women, but it was slightly larger than the original class. <laughs> In fact, it was a record-breaking 10,834 degrees conferred, shattering last year's record by more than 500 degrees. Before I elaborate further on our achievements over the past year, I'd like to reflect more on the 60-year journey that led us here. Strategic Communications put together a wonderful video highlighting this journey. I am so proud to share it with you now. The earliest years were very exciting because you had a lot of new faculty who were new to teaching in a new institution. They were visionary. They were uh, interested in making this place something. My earliest visions of Cal State Fullerton were how um, we used to be the land of orange groves. Seeing Cal State Fullerton grow up in Orange County and watching it thrive is a joy to behold. One of the best ways that I can describe the growth that uh, our university and institution has had is I remember seeing an image back in the 50s and 60s. Um, this institution actually used to keep uh, admission tallies on a chalkboard. We have gone from a small local university with an important role to a statewide and national institution. If you look at Orange County today, it's one of the most prosperous in the country. Not only that, it is one of the most highly educated workforce in the country. People probably uh, underestimate, even the business community underestimates, just how big we are in terms of economic impact. Largest population of any Cal State in the state of California. A quarter million alumni. So if you ask what's the impact, tremendous. Economically, huge impact. As the community grows, Cal State Fullerton grows, and as we change, Cal State Fullerton changes, and I think we're about not only just adapting to changes, but to leading the changes. When I think about one of the strongest values that our institution represents, I think about diversity in, in thought, 
uh, diversity in presence. Now, as a student, I uh, was exposed to it on a day-to-day -day basis and it challenged me. Uh, and it challenged me to open uh, my thinking and my thought process and embrace difference and embrace other cultures and identities and actually made me a lot more thoughtful individual. Um, I can go to one of the resource centers and actually get along with people who don't look like me. I can see someone down the road and still say hi and still feel that love. Um, there's like a family on campus. It's a community really to enrich greatness for every individual. It gives ability to every single person to flourish from a student, from faculty to staff, to become the best they can be. And so having uh, Cal State Fullerton be that beacon uh, is really important. So I think one of the fundamental values that guides us is respect. Fullerton represents opportunity. An opportunity where underrepresented students, minority students, students who do not have the financial means to attend the university, has an opportunity to get a great education. I walked into that educational institution taking remedial math, algebra 2 trig, taking remedial English, writing. Today, I'm in Congress. To actually be accepted into Cal State Fullerton and actually go to the school, um, it's, it means a lot to me and my sister. Um, I, I, mean, I am a first generation college student, so I am the first in my entire family to go to college. We are uh, an institution that transforms lives. I think Cal State Fullerton's reputation is so strong and it's getting even stronger. It's because of the leadership we've had. Bill Langsdorf was a gentleman. Class act. Don Shields, our only homegrown president. Miles McCarthy was acting. He and I worked on the development of the nursing program and I got to see him how important that was to somebody to make something happen. Under Jules Pomerkov, the university became a much more research-oriented place than it was before. She was uh, dedicated to diversity. Uh, after Jewel, we had President Gordon. He made me believe in a vision of what Cal State Fullerton could be through his actions and through results. Dr. Garcia brings a lot of energy to the campus. Somebody who came in with the vision of uplifting our already great work we were doing and bringing it to a national conversation. I think uh, President Garcia has, has just done a tremendous job in the five years or so that she's been here. You see the longevity of these people in these positions that never seen before in other institutions. And, and that is start from the top and goes down. And people have been here many, many years because they want to be here. To me, Titan Reach Heart means constantly striving to be better than what we are today. It's a challenge to us to take what we learned at the university and make our own impact on the world, to make it a better place. And to be able to carry that legacy and to be able to continue to be hungry for more and, and to grow is really values that you get here at Cal State Fullerton. Cal State Fullerton's greatest asset is really our students and our alumni. They represent who we are. No matter what we say, it's what we do and the impact of that. And that is reflected by the education of our students that we have now and the success of our alumni. And so I think that is the best gift that the county, the region, the nation, and the world could ask of a top-notch university. The ARC has been, I think, a uh, incredible journey for this institution 60 years old that in fact uh, says that we're going to stand together, we're going to make something good. We have a proposition here that people really want to be part of. 
and so we can be proud for that. And, and now we're in a, in, in a time where we can really take that experience, take that past 60 years of putting our mission forward uh, and inspiring others. And I expect that this celebration of 60 years will just be the start of a great next 60 years. Fabulous, wasn't it? As is our tradition, I will now share some of our achievements of the past year and look forward to the coming year through the lens of our strategic plan. For those of you new to the campus, our current five-year strategic plan is the first such plan in the university's history. In the time in which it was developed in back in 2012, six months from start to finish, it marked a turning point in both the pace at which this institution moves and the collaborative energy that moves it. And as you will soon hear, it led to the work that brought about the best graduation rates in our history and elevated Cal State Fullerton into the, not national stage, the international stage. But as we enter the final year of the plan, it is now time to reach higher. Throughout this academic year, we will lead the work that culminates with our new strategic plan from the fall 2017 establishment of strategic plan committees to the spring 2018 creation of the plan's goals. Then, on commencement week, as, and not weekend, as we graduate what will likely be the largest and most diverse class of Titan history, we will mark the official close of our current plan and set the table for the unveiling of our new strategic plan on this very stage exactly one year from today. Now, after four years, I'm sure all of you who have been here can recite the plan's four goals by heart. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not gonna start calling you out by name, but if you haven't memorized them by now, it'll be you rappelling down the side of College Park. <laughs> With that in mind, feel free to join me in reciting our first goal. <laughs> Develop and maintain a curricular and co-curricular environment that prepares students for participation in a global society and is responsive to workforce needs. As always, the College of the Arts continued to reach higher to implement objectives that align with goal one beginning with the celebration of the 10th anniversary of the Joseph A. W. Clay's III Performing Arts Center. This $48.5 million facility serves as an intellectual and cultural hub of Orange County. And considering the humble beginnings I mentioned of plays being produced in parking lots, it is a testament to the enduring spirit of the faculty, staff, and students of this college. I also had the honor of joining the university singers in Russia on their European tour, a model high-impact practice in which the audience gave our students an emotional standing ovation and didn't want them to leave the concert hall. As a matter of fact, we were asked to leave. <laughs> Not to be outdone on the goal one front, the College of Communications partner with Univision to establish an Orange County News Bureau on campus, as well as a hub for its Contigo Community Outreach Program on campus. Winner of the university's 2017 Teamwork and Collaboration Award, the partnership greatly enhances curricular and co-curricular activities, as well as career training for bilingual students in Spanish. In April, the College of Health and Human Development celebrated the one-year anniversary of its Center for Healthy Neighborhoods after serving more than 400 low-income families in its inaugural year. The college also received a three-year grant of nearly $800,000 from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to train students to identify and assess individuals with substance abuse disorders through classroom curriculum, experiential learning, and distance learning. In the College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics, 
Assistant Professor of Physics Jeffrey Lovelace won a five-year National Science Foundation Career Award, the most prestigious award a young scientist can be recognized with. His colleague, mathematics professor Armando Martinez Cruz, was awarded the Outstanding Latino Faculty in Higher Education Award from the American Association of Hispanics in Higher Education. The Mahalo College of Business and Economics hosted an inaugural career fair featuring 50 companies that attracted more than 700 students. And the college also offered a new professional and career development course to assist transfer students in their transition to university life. And while we're on goal one, I want to address a promise I made three years ago when I stood on this stage and said, quote, using the first goal of the strategic plan as a springboard, we will develop the university's first ever academic master plan, unquote. Today, I am proud to announce that this collaborative undertaking has been completed and our comprehensive 78-page academic master plan, which was published on our website in December, will continue to guide what we teach, who we teach, how we teach, who will do the teaching, and how many will be taught. The plan will be instrumental in the development of our university five-year strategic plan and the university's self-study and institutional report for our fall 2019 reaccreditation visit with the WASC Senior College and University Commission. On that note, I have appointed a WASC Self-Study and Institutional Report Steering Committee, co-chaired by Interim Provost Puri and Academic Senate Chair Steve Stambaugh, and subcommittees comprised of many diverse cross-campus members. They will develop the self-study through fall 2017, and a draft will be submitted to campus for feedback in spring 2018, with the final report due to WASC in fall 2018. I would be remiss to talk about our academic master plan without also mentioning what was previously called our diversity action plan, which is now under the purview of the President's Commission on Equity and Inclusion, as well in each of the university's six divisions. This work is ongoing, and will play a pivotal role in the university's short and long-term goals on policy and practices that enhance equity, inclusion, and civility. Moving on to goal two, improve per student persistence, increase graduation rates university-wide, and narrow the achievement gap for underrepresented students. This upcoming year, goal two, will be driven by the CSU mandated graduation initiative 2025, or GI 2025. Now, before we get into this, let me be clear. Cal State Fullerton met or exceeded many of the goals put forth in that original incarnation of GI 2025 with 10 years to spare. The success was the impetus for the CSU to elevate its GI 2025 goals with amendments to the initiative for all 23 campuses. In the parlance of academia, we were the ones in the front of the class who threw off the curve. But before we could even celebrate our success or be rewarded with more funding, the goalposts were moved by the governor and legislator who now asked that we push to increase four-year graduation rates. This is despite the fact the governor himself took more than four years to graduate. And the majority of our students work, are raising families, or are the first in their family to attend college. Nevertheless, this new challenge tracks with our aspiration to reach higher. And moving forward, we will improve four-year graduation rates, not by sacrificing our rigorous academic standards, but by elevating them and teaching students how to reach them. Let me repeat that one more time. Not by sacrificing our rigorous academic standards, but by elevating them, helping students to reach them. And not by pushing students who truly need six years to graduate, but by seeking out and supporting those 
who truly have the time and means to graduate in four years. For example, our outstanding student success teams recently identified 838 students who are on track to graduate in four and a half years, nearly half of whom accepted completion grants for summer session that positions them to graduate in four years. We also created a steering committee, a 17-member advisory board, and five task forces to advance GI 2025 efforts and break down specific barriers to graduation. A student affairs, academic affairs, and information technology collaboration created new data-driven strategies to advance GI 2025 through the expansion of high-impact practices. This past year, more than 6,000 students participated in 57 HIPS designated courses from all eight colleges. The College of Education expanded programs for K-12 students in Orange County, providing summer and after-school programs for more than 2,000 students. They also welcomed their first cohort of Growing Future Teachers, a mentorship program for the recruitment and support of underrepresented students in the field of education. Goal two was alive and well in the College of Engineering and Computer Science with 11 members of the Association of Computing, Women's Student Chapter, receiving the Girl Scouts of Orange County President's Award for inspiring over 500 Girl Scouts to explore STEM careers. In the College of, Commu of, of Humanities and Social Sciences, Professor Sarah Hill arranged for her students in her Politics and Policymaking in Sacramento class to meet with Assembly Member and Titan alum Philip Chen on the floor of the California Assembly. And of course, University Extended Ed Education helped lead the way in promoting Goal 2's objective to bolster participation in study abroad, which has increased by 97% in the last three years. I am particularly proud that the President's Strategic Fund, a privately funded program that has measurably increased study away and study abroad for low-income students, garnered national attention with the 2016 Excellence and Innovation Award for International Education from the American Association of State Colleges and Universities. I am also pleased that this university continues to support and value international study and travel for our faculty and staff. As always, the Division of Student Affairs contributed greatly to our Goal 2 success, including the ongoing involvement of our Male Success Initiative, which is expanding with programs and concentrating on empowering all men, especially men of color. The Division also played a critical role in the completion of our Titan Student Union expansion, which brings another 27,000 square feet of new space to what is affectionately called our campus living room. The Division of Information Technology was also integral to this and many other upgrades, having expanded Wi-Fi coverage throughout campus while completely completing successfully upgrades of 40 classrooms with the latest in wireless teaching technology. The Division of Administration and Finance was also heavily involved in these and many upgrade endeavors, having renovated 37 classrooms with plans to renovate another 47 in the coming year. The Division also created a shuttle service from our new overflow parking at EV Free Church and Brea Mall. This touches on the need to continue to build relationships with the community to alleviate pressure stemming from the fact that we are an impacted campus as well as a landlocked campus. To that end, over the last year, we successfully expanded our campus with the opening of Titan Hall, previously Western State College of Law, and now as administration and finance leads the development of our physical master plan, we are working on devising new ways to ensure what limited space we do have that it is being utilized most efficiently. For example, we hear a lot of parking and classroom space complaints. And yet, 
when you come on Fridays and stroll around campus, it's pretty much deserted. Newsflash, we are open on Fridays. <laughs> or at least we are supposed to be. And the physical master plan will look into this and many other ways we can better utilize our limited space to better serve our ever-growing body of students. We already talked about our strategic plan's third goal, recruit and retain a high quality and diverse faculty and staff. When I opened by welcoming our newest faculty members, a huge testament to the collaborative work of the Division of Human Resources, Diversity and Inclusion. In addition to processing more than 3,000 applications en route to hiring the aforementioned 42 new faculty members, HRDI also successfully hired an outstanding and diverse group of 138 new staff members from a pool of 30,000 applicants. Not only are these new titans the most qualified for their positions, their collective diversity reflects the changing face of our region and our student body. Indeed, HRDI continued to thrive this year under the interim leadership of Dr. David Forges, and after a national search, I was pleased to appoint him as a division's permanent vice president in May. I'd also like to thank Dr. Puri for continuing to serve as our interim provost, along with interim deans Barua, Ramatian, and Fink, who continue to lead their colleges as we begin to conduct national searches. As many of you know, the openings of these positions is part of a national and normal evolution of a thriving university as people retire or move on to other administrative responsibilities. I am also proud to welcome Dr. Clement Guthrow, our recently appointed dean of the library. So you see people retire or they go on to other positions that may be better for them, and it's the normal process of evolution. Now, as per usual, we can't really talk about goal four, increase revenue through fundraising, entrepreneurial grants, and contracts, without first addressing the, the budget. The governor's May revised budget allocation was $157 million to the CSU which was significantly less than the Board of Trustees' request of $325 million. Thanks to the advocacy of the CNU and many, many people on this campus, across our campus and throughout the system, the final budget allocation was increased by another $179 million baseline appropriation. While this is still short of our full request, and there are many areas in need of additional resources, it does provide baseline funding to cover mandatory cost increases. Included in the state appropriation is a system-wide enrollment of increase of 2,487 FTEs. Our share, we have been allocated to increase our enrollment by 100 FTEs. Not a large increase, but it will help in terms of improving access to the university and also providing additional baseline funds. Additionally, the Board of Trustees voted to increase tuition rates, which will generate $4.3 million for our campus to fund GI 2025 efforts. Despite these increases, our university state run funding per student is still the lowest in the system. However, the Chancellor's Office has recently signaled that future funding will be tied to improving student success via GI 2025. And given our success thus far in this arena, we remain hopeful to close this funding rate gap in the near future. Regardless, it is clear that we can't count on the state for all the resources we need. We never have been. But remember the 139 thousand, but we can count on each other. That begins with enhancing the philanthropic culture we've built over the last four years. This past year, with the support of Vice President Sachs and his team in university advancement, we created the Champions Program, 
which introduces the university to a wide swath of individuals and resulted in a 20% increase in the number of gifts in the $10,000 range to the $25,000 range, which is the entry point for major gift fundraising. Concert on the Stars, which was produced by University Advancement in the College of the Arts, raised a record high of more than $1 million last year, a goal we hope to break next month on September 23rd. Hope you have your, you're gonna be there. I hope you will be there to support us. It's an amazing evening. And you can't talk about building a philanthropic culture without mentioning athletics. As our athletic director, Jim Donovan, often says, athletics is the front porch of the university and that it is the lens through which many throughout the nation and internationally are introduced to us. This past year, that front, por that front porch shined like never before with seven winning programs in the Big West Conference for the first time in our history. Baseball, softball, men's basketball, women's tennis, and both men's and women's soccer, with men's track and field winning the Big West Championship for the first time in program history. Titan Baseball advanced to the College World Series for the 18th time. And the best part about that was we got to celebrate this achievement by dogpiling on the field of longtime rival Long Beach State. I missed that game, but maybe it's a good thing because given my excitement at the previous game, I'm pretty sure I would have ended up in that dog pile. <laughs> Off the field, athletic success has been no less impressive and since Jim's arrival in 2012. Titan Athletics has nearly quadrupled annual fundraising, increased total funds in the endowment more than six times over, and increased annual student attendance at athletic events by 1,200%. More importantly, student athlete six-year graduation rates have seen a 48% improvement and are now on par with university-wide averages. And last but not least on goal four, our research and grant awards in 2017 grew $4.8 million year over year. And with that push, we successfully met the strategic plan's goal to increase overall grants and contracts revenue by 25%. All of these achievements and many others give us opportunities to tell our stories in ways that inspire others to join us and contribute to our university. And when you look at our total new gift commitments university-wide, you'll see that our story is spreading like never before. The final fiscal year before the implementation of our strategic plan, the university received $8.5 million in gift commitments. The next year, total new gift commitments nearly doubled to $16.1 million, surpassing our five-year goal to increase philanthropic giving to at least $15 million in just one year. In fiscal year 14-15, we raised more than $17 million. And the following year, we raised over $22 million, which nearly tripled our annual gift commitments in just three years. Now, at this point, it was starting to get ridiculous. <laughs> the institution never had back-to-back -back $20 million plus years. So there were some folks who said we needed to adjust our expectations. Well, those people don't know us well, because this past year, we had the highest number of individual donors in university history, and you guessed it. We recorded back-to-back -back years of more than $20 million for the first time in history. We also nearly doubled the market value of our endowment since 2012 from $34.3 million to more than $61 million today. Moving forward, we are in the process of preparing 
for the first ever comprehensive fundraising campaign in university history. This endeavor is an important point in the maturity of our campus and will serve as a catalyst in creating an even stronger philanthropic culture. As jaw-dropping as all of our fundraising success and future plans are, it takes on new meaning when presented through the lens of our students' success. With this in mind, I am excited to share our ultimate achievements. But before I do, I'd like to remind everyone that works at this university to always remember, you are all educators, whether faculty, staff, or administrator. And when our students achieve their ultimate academic goals and life dreams, they stand on your shoulders. And as you are about to see, your shoulders have only been getting stronger. When we began the development of our strategic plan in 2012, our six-year graduation rate for first-time full-time freshmen was 51%. We aimed high with our strategic plan, announcing a goal to increase the graduation rates to 60% in five years. That's where we made a mistake. We didn't need five years because we did it in three. The following year, we hit a new record high of 63%. And while the data is being finalized this year, the preliminary numbers indicate our six-year graduation rate for first-time freshmen may reach 60%. 7%. That is a 4 percentage point gain year over year, a 30% improvement in just five years, and the highest such rate in university history. But seeing as how GI 2025 now asks us to focus on four-year graduation rates, let's see how we're doing in that arena. In the spring of 2012, the year before our strategic plan, four-year graduation rates for first-time freshmen was at 14%. Today, four years into our strategic plan, graduation rates for this same group will be approximately 23%. That is a nine percentage point gain and an eye-popping 65% improvement in just five years. Further, over the last four years, we cut our notoriously stubborn opportunity gap, or some people call it achievement gap, for first-time freshmen in half and completely eliminated it for transfer students. Dear Titans, there is no doubt that we are well on our way to become the model comprehensive university of the nation. And in closing, I want to share something extremely important that must not be how does a humble state school built on big dreams for a college dropped in the middle of the perfect spot in Orange County by a freeway with a goal for education in 60 years be first here in the nation? The 40,000 students within our foster got a lot farther because we work a lot harder and we are a lot smarter and sometimes we feel a martyr but today we celebrate with our peers and partners. When I walk across this campus, I think this place is insane, man. How do students navigate with phones up to their face, man? But all around you is diversity acclaimed, and the world's gonna know our name. What's our name, man? We are Cal State Fullerton. We're working here at Cal State Fullerton. And there's a million things we haven't done. Just you wait, just you wait. As I leave for my commute, down my route, from State College to Nodwood Avenue, I wonder when all this construction will be through. This traffic makes me sick, I'm done with it. The parking, parking structure's big, big, but the spaces, spaces go quick. God, my, my syllabus is fine. Outline. The students will arrive in one more week. The students arrive in one more week. The students arrive in one more week. The students arrive in one more week. Let's retire. Just you wait. Here at Cal State Fullerton. Here at Cal State Fullerton. Titanium is here for you. Universe and more.
to them. Me, I'll plan for them. Me, I'll hire them. Me, I'll help them. And me, I'm the president who lead them. There's a million things we haven't done, but just you wait. Who are we friends? We are Cal State Fullerton. Happy academic year. Let's celebrate the 60th. We are Cal State Fullerton. Woo!